Alec Jones. This is a tumultuous time. A lot of people are unsettled. And we need a revival. We need a revival. We need a refreshing. We need a renewal. And so t the 25th verse there. In Psalm 119. It says, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thy me according unto thy word. Remove me. Remove me from the lying, for the lying. Remove me for, from the lying, the way of lying, and grant me the law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth, thy judgments. Have I laid before me? I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments, and when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Now, when you actually read this in the the New American translation, it's a lot better. When you read it in the New American translation. And so here the psalmist, the psalmist is, it doesn't really give a definite answer who the psalmist is here, but it sounds like David. It looked like David's handwriting is all over this, all over this, if you read the psalms. And, um, and uh, from the commentary, what the commentary said that the writer the writer is, is escaping, he's running from his enemies. He's running, trying to get away from his enemies. And, and he's in a place, he's in a place, and now he's exhausted. He's tired. Have you ever been exhausted? Have you ever been tired? There are different types of tiredness. You have a physical tiredness of exhaustion when you're constantly busy, and then you have mental exhaustion and the mental exhaustion it comes from um, a multiplicity of, of, of activities and responsibilities and so your mind get tired your mind get tired and when your spirit get tired when your spirit get tired then you have a spiritual tiredness as the spiritual tiredness is when you become so discouraged you become so discouraged and you become what is called we call spiritless in other words, in other words, you're, there's no joy there. There's no peace there. There's no, there's no praise there. Everything is just void. Everything is just, just empty. Empty. It's empty. It's uh, shallow, hollow, just nothing, no, nothing there. And so in our walk with God, we begin to experience different things. We begin to experience different things. And the truth of the matter is that all of us experience these things periodically. If it's for a day, if it's for a season, if it's for a month. But one thing I want to say to you, but you don't want to linger in that place. You don't want to linger in that place. You don't want to linger in that discouragement, in that depression. And so he's depressed. And uh, he said, my soul, in verse 25, he, say, he says, my soul cleave it. Cleave it. It means to literally to... To, to adhere, it means to adhere and closely and loyally, unwaveringly stick to something. Are you listening to me? I'll be connected. So, so what he's talking about here, he says that my soul cleave it unto the dust. He's talking about his soul cleave it unto the dust. And the dust here, and uh, in the language of the Bible, it talks about, 
It talks about the clay. It talks about the earth, the mud, the ashes. And we know in the scripture that ashes in the, in the, in the scripture is symbolic of, of, of nothingness and brokenness. And the Bible talks about when Job when Job had, when his kids were killed and he lost all his wealth and his wife abandoned him and left him, the Bible says he went down in sackcloth and ashes. He went down in mourning. And what he would do, the Middle Eastern custom was, they would cover their heads with ashes and they would take the dust, the dirt, and throw it up. Just throw it up in the air. Symbolic of God, I'm nothing. I came into this world with nothing. And uh, nothing, you know, I came in and nothing I'll leave out. And Job and his brokenness, he was in that state. And Job was covered with boils all over his body, saints. When you read about it, he, if they were all over his body. He had a fever. He was experiencing, he was experiencing what we know, what is known as, as, as altered mental status. Some say depression, severe chronic depression. I mean, all kinds of things were going on with him. Are you listening to me? And, uh, and he sat there, and he sat there, and he endured what he endured. He endured. It wasn't forever. It wasn't forever. Even though God allowed Job to be tried, but God gave Job the strength, amen, to sustain him even through his trials and even through his tests. And sometimes you may feel like that it's unfair the things that you're going through and you don't understand the purpose of why you're going through those things. Many times I felt that way. I felt like it was undeserving. And one of the things that when I would go through a trial and go through a test as a young, young man, a young Christian man, and I would say my first response was, Lord, what did I do? What did I do? It's, it's not because you've done something wrong. It's because you're do, doing what you're supposed to do and you're doing it right. And not only has it gotten the attention to the, of heaven, God, but the devil also. He see that you're walking upright. He see that you're in the word. He, say that, he see that you're committed to prayer. You're committed to fasting. Amen. Sustaining and an abstaining, staying away from ungodly situations and circumstances. He sees that. And he despises it. Satan hates holiness. He hates righteousness. He hates it. He hates peace. But he loves confusion. The devil is messy. Did you hear what I just said? He is messy. He's always keeping up some mess. And so here he is. He said, my soul cleave it to the, de the dust. In other words, you and I, we are connected to the earth. So the circumstances of life, if we're not careful, the circumstances of life will captivate us and overwhelm us and pull us into, and pull us into darkness. Are you listening to me? Into a deep depression. And this is what is happening to, this, to the psalmist here. He's in a severe depression, deep depression, being overwhelmed by the circumstances that, he, that he's facing. And what is happening? That he's fleeing from his enemy. Now, it sounds like here that David is fleeing from his son Absalom. You know, he had to leave the kingdom because Absalom tried to take over. Amen. Amen. His son. And David was so hurt in his his. His uh, lieutenants and captains and, 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 and commanders, uh, different ones, they wanted to kill. They wanted to kill Absalom. But David said, do not put a finger on him. Do not touch him. David said, even though he's in rebellion, even though he's being disrespectful, even though he's humiliating me, he's humiliating our family, and I'm the king, he said, but don't touch him. That's my flesh and blood. David said, that's my child. Let me tell you something. David did not have to touch him. And what happened to Absalom one day, they was galloping on his horse. He was driving, he was, he was riding that horse at a high rate of speed, and he went between two limbs. Are you listening to me? 
And the way those limbs were was out like this. And he was hanged. He was hung. When he went through that and the heart saw under him and he was caught there and he was pretty much brought about his death. There he was. There he was dying. He was literally dying. But what they did, he still had some breath in him, right? So what they did, they allowed him to just die. They allowed him to die. He told them not to put, put their hands on him. <laughs> Did not he say that? He humiliated his dad. Now there are some enemies you're going to have in life. There are some enemies that you're going to have in life, even on your job. Let me tell you something. You're not going to even have to have to even be bothered with them. You're not going to even have to be bothered. God is going to take care of them for you. Those enemies that are, have become a nuisance, an irritation, God is going to take care of them for you. They all, that's all they are. Distraction is to try to distract you uh, from being effective. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all they there for is to distract you. They are there to distract you and get a paycheck. I'm trying to preach today if y'all let me. But God will deal with your enemies. Now, so he says here, then he comes down here. And so we found out that he's depressed. He's low in a very low place and a very dark place. And then he says, ask the Lord. He says, ask the Lord. He says, uh, he said, quicken thou me according to thy word. He asking for the Lord to quicken him. Now, that word, the word quicken, it literally means to, to make alive. Are you listening to me? It means to make alive. It means to, uh, to restore. To restore one's strength and to restore one's vigor. Uh, to restore one's vitality. This is what it means. This is exactly what it means. Because the only way that this the psalmist could be released from the pressure of the depression, it was the only way that they, they can be released from it. And, uh, and that would bring a, a revival and a quickening of God's presence. If you ever notice that when you're depressed and you're down and you're sad, you're tired, somewhere, all of a sudden, out of your spirit comes a song. And you find yourself, you find yourself sitting in church. Maybe you hadn't really participated, but subconsciously, the song got down in your spirit. And you find yourself saying this, Always remember Jesus. Oh Lord, Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. And then it starts feeling good to your soul. It starts feeling good to your soul. And then you have a release. Whenever you start praising God, you have a release in your depression. Because the praises are coming up. And as the praises are coming up, the, the depression is going out. And God's anointing began to fall. Yes, it begins to fall upon you like fresh dew from heaven, like rain. It begins to fall on you and it begins to quicken you and the burdens begin to break off of you. And then you're just walking through the house on the job. You went in depressed. Under your breath. Mm -hmm. When Oh Lord, Jesus, always keep him on.
You're mine. Keep him on, you're mine. Ah. Always keep him on your mind. Keep him on your mind. Mm. All it takes is one anointed song to bring you out of depression. To change your mood. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. And once that spirit of darkness leave you, that depression leave you, the refreshing and the quickening, it comes. And with that freshness of God's presence, remember that as a re there's a relief. Yes, it is. There's a refreshing and there's a revelation that comes. When you're doing this, I notice that whenever I'm worshiping and when God, I start singing, I hear God's voice. When I'm singing, when I'm worshiping, I hear his voice so clear. So when I get into worship, I can tell you by the magnitude of the worship, what kind of service is going to be. One thing that I know about God, I know, I know about the Lord. He always wants to be treated special. And if he can get people to come together and treat him, yes, in holiness and respect and reverence, he'll show up. Y'all want me in your service? I'll be glad to come. But when I come, yeah, you got to welcome me. You see, the Lord is not welcoming every church. Uh, because it takes you out of your formality. Are you listening to me? Somebody told, oh, I love the church. I love the church, pastor. But, you know, I tell people, I love the church. It's different because they have church alone. Oh, we don't have church alone. What I know about the spirit of God is this here. Have you ever been to someone's house? It's like, come on in, have some tea and some coffee. I have something I have to tell you. I, I have a discrepancy in my, in my apartments, in my apartment book, whatever. I, I didn't know. I, I kind of got it mixed up. And he, they invited you to their house, and now they got to leave and rush out. How am I going to invite you to another time? You see, the only way God will come if we allow him to do what he want to do. See, to you, everything may be going fine. Everything is going jolly in your life. But is somebody here? If it takes them all day to wait for God at this altar, to heal the cancer. To heal the psychosis. Hallelujah. To heal their home, their marriage. They'll stay here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How desperate are you? How desperate are you? Have you ever been desperate? You'll do whatever you gotta do. So God will bless you. That's what the woman did. That's what the woman did. They had the issue of blood. She pressed and leaned in on the crowd. They said, who is that? Who, what is that? The woman, woman that said that, she leaned in. She leaned in. She leaned in. Because her issue of blood was affecting her marriage. It was affecting her, her, her sex life, her intimacy with her husband. She said, I know God gave it to her because the devil sure didn't give it to her. She said, I just touch his garment. If I can just come to church and, and, and I can just get real close to him. If he's moving on the row in front of me, I can just reach over while he's touching somebody else. 
I can stretch out my hand, my feet, whatever I got to do. Because I need a blessing. I need a blessing. I need a blessing. And so when he get here, when he gets here, we slow drag. Take your time. Now you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all need, y'all minds need to be delivered. Everybody didn't slow day like that. What I'm trying to tell me, I want him to just take his time. Yes. Tarry a while. Yes. Any backs out of place, put them in place. Any blood pressure high, bring it down to normal. Draw in the eyes. Somebody need a healing in the eye. God remove the glaucoma. Heal those eyes, God. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, take your time. Take your time, Jesus. Take your time. Take your time. Sit at the table. Do what you want to do. That's what you want. Don't rush them. I was in Africa. And I was invited to the home. I was ministering there. Normally I don't do this, but when I'm there, I'm in pretty much being consecrated. You know, until time, uh, or either I'll go, they'll take me uh, round two, come and get me, take me and get something to eat or whatever, and I go back in prayer and then get ready for. I'm already been, I already been prepared. But, but one of the doctors, he was, the doc, he was a doctor and his wife was an engineer. They invited me to their home. And one of the ministers said, they want you to come. He said, they're very good people. And I went to their home. And uh, they were so hospitable. I mean, and so we went to their home and they was fixing tilapia. The woman was, she was frying the tilapia, which is a, you know, you don't know it, but it's an African fish. And, um. I'm not going to get into the logistics and all that and how other nations ended up with it. You probably can figure it out yourself. But it takes the tilapia to become a fully developed by the, by the week. It doesn't take them long. It's like this, and then by the week, it's like this. Are oh, you listening to them? And they're very good fish, healthy. And she was frying the fish, oh my God. And I ate the first one. Everything is made from scratch. I said, oh, my God, this is just delicious. And they have a revelation on the word of God. Because when you invite the man of God into your home, they just don't come by themselves. God comes with them. His favor, his grace, his mercy, all of that. You leave a blessing on the house. You never want someone to come to your house and, and the food is despicable. The food is horrible and your hospitality is miserable. And so I, I ate the first one. They ate my salad and all that. They said, you like it? I said, yes, it's good. They just wanted to make sure that I was happy. And my friend said, man of God, is everything okay? I said, yes, Apostle. Everything is okay. This is great. This is delicious. He said, they just love your ministry. And I said, I just love them too. And so, Brenda, they say, you want more? I said, yeah, bring more. I think I ate like three. I'm talking about the whole fit. I, it was so good. The food was just so good. And what I'm trying to say is when the Lord comes, you don't ever want to run out of the door. You don't ever want to treat him in such a way that he's a burden or a bother. No. Mm -mm. No. Do whatever you want to do. In each service, God is doing something. I can't, he doesn't tell me everything. But there's something about that anointing. That presence, when you can sit in that presence, 
It, dis, it does something for your mind. That you can't get down at the neighborhood pharmacy. That you can't get in your. <coughs> it ain't in there. The solution to your problem. It ain't in that. It ain't in drugs. It ain't in drugs. Oh, 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 the, the, the alcohol and the, the wine and all that kind of stuff. It'll, you know, it'll try to sedate you or whatever kind of. It'll make you feel a little light. But when you sober up, it's still going to be there. So stop wasting your money. I'm trying to help somebody. Stop wasting your money. And, and you want some peace? You want to pay, pay your bills? You want me to teach you how to pay your bills? There's one bill you owe. You always owe it. You owe God some praise. For what he already done. Not for what he's about to do, but I'm talking about for what he already done. You see, when you appreciate somebody, you can get anything out of them. When you appreciate them, you get anything out of them. He said, you didn't ask for this. I met your need, but you didn't. I'm going to give you this because, because you appreciate me. You love me. I'm just going to, this going to be extra. That's what the song say, more than enough, more than enough. He's, she said, what's this? Vicky Ryan said, she said, you just don't give me what I need, but you give me the thing that I want, that I want, that I want. It's just like him. It's just like him. He's not a bother. It's, it's a pleasure. It's an honor for him to be here. There's a person in here you've been dealing with insomnia. But tonight, baby, brother, he's going to start sleeping. Sound. Deep. And uninterrupted. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, everything that we need is in the anointing. I can try to preach a sermon and do the best that I'm capable of doing. But when the anointing comes, he allows us to experience the sermon. Hallelujah. When the anointing comes, he brings the Bible alive. Hallelujah. So we can experience this. I got to let you go. And the psalmist was saying, I need a revival. I need a revival. Quicken me, Lord. I'm tired physically, mentally, running from my enemies. I'm tired of all of this stuff that I'm having to do and responsibility. I need a quickening. I need, I need a quickening. I need to quicken it. Now, now I never been one to do drugs. Never been one, never had a reason to do. For one thing, because I just relied on the Lord. And furthermore, it just didn't make any sense. I already got a deficit in my life and I need money. Why would I take what I already have? Thank you. This don't make no sense. Proverbs 3 and 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. For tithing and giving, please visit our website at HoustonDeliveranceCenter.com. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And hit the bell for instant notifications for a new and refreshing word each week.